We are now going to study some common random variables that are likely to occur when you do an experiment and take a measurement. Okay, so these are the types of measurements that we you know, usually take. Okay? And so let's start with the simplest kind of measurement of all, the binary measurement. Just like we discussed, you know, are all the tosses matching? So that kind of binary measurement, yes, no, zero, one, left, right, up, down. Okay, so anytime the, the, the measurement you take can, can have just one of two values, okay? We call that a Bernoulli or binary random variable. So Bernoulli or binary random variable. Okay, so the idea here is that, remember, when you've done the experiment, you've, you've, you've obtained the random outcome, you take your measurement, okay, and now we analyze the various probabilities of the various measurements, i.e. the PDF, then we can forget about, you know, the details of the experiment and the complex outcomes. We can focus on the possible values of the measurement and their probabilities. So we can focus on the PDF. And so when we talk about random variables, we're just going to focus on the, the, the possible values of the random variable and its PDF. Okay. And that basically, you know, you know, tells you everything you need to know about the random variable. Okay. And so the Bernoulli random variable, there are just two outcomes. Okay. So let's call it X. Okay. So the outcome can either be zero or one. Okay. And so this is the Bernoulli random variable. And if, and, 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 you know, we typically uh, assign the probability of one to be P. Okay. And since these are all the possible outcomes, the, the probability of zero then becomes one minus P because some measurement, either zero or one, has to occur. So if the probability is P for one, then the probability is one minus P for zero. And if I wanted to put it in a table, you know, the possible X values are zero and one and the probability of X. And if I wanted to be completely formal, I would say P sub big X of little X is one minus P and P. So that's the Bernoulli random variable. And you think, wow, really? Yes, anytime you're interested in an indicator, will it be sunny or not tomorrow? Bernoulli random variable. So you do your complex you know, weather simulation, it, give, it, it, it has randomness in it, and it gives you an outcome, and then you measure whether or not it'll be sunny. So a Bernoulli outcome is, on its own, a very you know, important outcome. But very often in practice, we are interested in more complex measurements, and those complex measurements can involve, you know, a sum of Bernoulli's. So let's take a couple of examples. Okay, so sums of Bernoulli's. Okay. And the simplest example of a sum of Bernoulli's is you, is you flip a coin n times, or you flip n independent coins. Flip n independent coins. Okay, how many heads did you get? That x equals the number of heads. So that's a measurement. Okay, but now we can imagine flipping each coin, you know, as a separate experiment. So flip each coin as a separate experiment. So, you know, you have maybe heads, tails, tails, heads, you know, tails, and so on. So each coin is a separate head measurement. And we will, we will typically indicate by, you know, uh, uh, we will typ typically in indicate, you know, a Bernoulli random variable as indicating success or failure. Okay, so success probability P, failure probability zero. Okay, and in, in this case, we can say that you succeed if you get ahead. So you're looking for a head. So this is a succeed. So this is, you know, if, if, if for a Bern this is a Bernoulli and it, it was one. And this is a Bernoulli and it was zero and it was zero and this was one and this was one, uh, zero, sorry, and so on. Okay, so flipping a coin or flipping n coins corresponds to, you know, uh, n independent Bernoulli outcomes. Okay, we, and that's how we would typically even refer to this. We have n independent Bernoulli outcomes. One, each of them is a Bernoulli random variable, either one or zero. And R, the thing that we are interested in, the measurement, is just the sum of these. Because, you know, the sum of these is the, equal to the number of heads because you get a one for each head and a zero for each tail. So this is just the sum of the individual Bernoulli random variables of the individual Bernoullis. And that's there's no problem. So effectively what we're saying is we've defined a random variable x in terms of using other random variables, okay, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus all the way to xn if you tossed n coins. OK, 
Okay, so what we're saying here is a random variable x is a sum of other random variables. This is called a sum of Bernoulli's. It's a very important random variable. Okay, um, we will see later when we discuss the binomial. This is exactly what a binomial random variable is. Okay, so this is an example of using one set of random variables to define another. So these each take a value in 0 to 1. So this takes a value in that can be either 0, 1, 2, or and so on up to n. Okay. All right. So that's the Bernoulli random variable. Um, and we can, you know, you, it's, it's important on its own because a lot of times we're inter interested in, you know, you know, a binary outcome, but also it's important because we can build other random variables as a sum of Bernoullis. And that also happens often. Okay, let's talk about the uniform random variable. This is the other kind of simplest possible random variable. The uniform random variable. Okay, so it's a measurement that takes on some values. Okay, and each value is equally likely. So the measurement takes on some values. And each value is equally likely. Okay, so sometimes we just list the value. So a uniform random variable, let's call it u. Okay, uh, sometimes we just, you know, a uniform random variable on the uh, interval of numbers 1 to n. Okay, basically can equal one of these numbers. So the possible values are 1, 2, 3, uh, for let's call it k up to k okay and because it takes the same probability on each of those the probability is 1 over k for each possible value okay so these are the possible values for the uniform random variable and these are the probabilities okay so it's a very simple if you look at the pdf so the, for the possible values 1 2 3 and so on up to k it's just a constant so if I were to draw the PDF, it would just be a constant. 1 over k, and it's just a constant. That's what it looks like. Okay, now, you know, um, if, the, if you have a Bernoulli random variable and the probability of success is 1 half, then the probability of failure is 1 half, and the Bernoulli becomes an example of a uniform random variable. Okay. In general, you know, uniform random variables, you know, can occur. Okay, it's, 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 it's rare that they typically occur in practice. Usually we use uniform random variables when we develop algorithms. So I'll give you some examples of that. Okay. Um, so uh, when I was young, you know, when I was young, so Malik lived at home. So Malik lived at home. And this is school, so Malik goes to school. Okay. And, you know, there were two paths to school. So there was the first path and a second path. Okay. And, and I've drawn, you know, the paths with colors, but the colors don't really mean anything. So I have to choose a path to go on. And I had this great friend that we call him the Grim Reaper. So I had a great friend called the Grim Reaper. Okay. And... You know, the Grim Reaper would, if, if the Grim Reaper met me along my path, usually I was relieved of my lunch and what used to be called my pocket money. Okay. And so I would always want to try to pick a path that, you know, would avoid the Grim Reaper, but somehow the Grim Reaper always knew which path Malik was taking to school. Okay. And so, you know, if Malik had known probability, then it turns out that Malik could have won half the battles with the Grim Reaper. So Malik could win half the battles with the Grim Reaper. Okay. By avoidance, basically. What would Malik do? What, 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 what? Okay, so it turns out that, you know, if I had a coin, so a uniform random variable with two outcomes, heads and tails, half, half, okay, I flip the coin, and, and only based on the coin, I will decide which uh, path to take when I get to my choice. Okay, when I get to the point where I need to, pick, to make the choice, I flip the coin. Now, no matter where, what Grim Reaper's strategy is, 
Okay. Malik will win half the battles just by avoidance. Okay. By avoidance. By avoidance. Okay. So that's an example of how we use uniform random variables in practice when we develop algorithms. So uniform random variables, they might not occur too often in practice. Now, one of the cases where they will occur in practice is, you know, you roll a die. Okay, and if it's a fair dice, then the outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six, and the probabilities are one, six for all. So that's a uniform random variable. But once you get a little more sophisticated and roll two dice and are interested in the sum, it's no longer a uniform random variable. We saw the sum of two dice just earlier. You know, two is not very likely. The most likely number is seven, and then it comes back down to unlikely for 12. Okay, so even a, a, a pair of dice, the sum of a pair of dice as a random variable is not uniform. Okay. But uniform random variables are used a lot in algorithms. Let me give you another example of an algorithm where we can use a uniform random variable and it might actually strike you as a little bit of a stunning example. Okay. So, you, so, so I, encu I encourage you to think about it. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, that a uniform random variable can be used to solve this problem. And it's a little bit miraculous that indeed it can be solved this way. So what's the problem? So it's a game between you and me. So there's Malik. Okay. And student. And there are five numbers. So there are five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And um, <clears throat> what's going to happen is Malik is going to pick two numbers, any two numbers. So, and Malik gets to choose the two numbers. Okay. So here's how the game plays. Malik picks two numbers and puts them in envelopes. So for example, if Malik picks two and four, he puts two and four in an envelope. Okay. Sealed envelopes. Okay. And um, then what Malik is going to do is going to randomly jiggle these around or it's basically flip a coin and randomly pick one of these. Okay, randomly pick one, randomly pick one, randomly pick one and, sh and, and show it to you. For example, if I randomly picked two, I would show you two. Okay, so you will see two. Now you have to guess whether the other envelope is larger or smaller. And you might think, well, since I'm randomly picking, you know, uh, how is it possible I, I'm, I'm going to have a 50-50 shot at winning this game? Because, you know, you, you, you will equally likely show me either of these. Okay. And so half the time you'll show me the larger one and half the time you'll show me the smaller one. And there's no way you showed me two. I have no idea what the other one is. It could be one or it could be three, four or five. Okay. And um, I'm not picking my two numbers randomly. I'm picking two numbers deliberately, two and four, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, randomly shuffling them and, and then showing you one. Okay. So you might think, okay, so one of one strategy might be, oh, let me always say lower. So I'm always going to say that the number you showed me is the lower one. You'll be right half the time. Okay. If you always say, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to say higher, you'll be right half the time. Okay. So the question is, is there a strategy that you can use? You have to tell me your strategy, whatever it is, so that that'll, that'll influence what numbers I pick. But if, is there a strategy you can use which, okay, guarantees, well, not guarantees, which, which allows you to win with probability strictly bigger than a half in this game? Okay. Probability greater than a half to win. Okay. So basically, I'm asking you to come up with an algorithm, okay, an algorithm, a strategy, okay, that will allow you to win strictly more than half the time. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you that any deterministic strategy you come up with, like always say lower, always say higher, all these strategies you can sit down and verify because I pick my, I pick the number to show you randomly. Those deterministic strategies will all succeed with probability exactly a half. Okay. Half the time, let's say you always say higher, half the time I'm showing you the lower number, so you'll fail half the time okay, because I randomly pick. Okay. But there is a strategy that gives you a success probability for this game more than a half. Okay. And you have to use randomness in the strategy. Okay. And in fact, you have to use a, well, it turns out that it's best to use a uniform random variable, just like I use in my strategy, a uniform random variable in order to avoid Grim Reaper. If you, if you suitably use a uniform random variable in your strategy, you can win this game more than half the time. Just to show you okay, that, you know, these days in computer science, we often use randomness, especially uniform random variables, in order to make the algorithms work better with better properties. Okay. 
I'll show you another example of that today. Um, okay, so this is the uniform random variable. Now let's get on to the, the big ticket items. Okay, we're going to discuss the Bernoulli random variable and the exponential random variable. So let's erase.